bouncing off the wall, it's hitting me. Hello, people of the world. Welcome to this. Getting back to work on making this pile of Ford Focus SVT into a 2002 Ford Focus WRC replica. Eek! Angel Fish Food Factory is over here making some cardboard templates because wide body. God, because how like, do you come up with them so fast? It's like Fantasy Factory, but with fish. The last step to grafting on these steel wide body panels from an actual WRC Focus is to close up the gap right here between the factory inner fender portion. So that's some steel, that's some cardboard. Push with your ass if you don't have gas. <laughs> Before we can finish up any body work and sanding, we gotta have the core structure done and ready. Why am I even trying to save this crusty old thing? It's in such bad shape. I'm uh, probably not gonna reuse these horns. So this flimsy little piece is all that holds the radiator and AC condenser in place and my skid plate has to mount to this so i got a big problem that uh this is a magnet and that is not steel that's aluminium damn it i have a big piece of square steel stock this entire time i thought that was a giant chunk of steel i had sitting back there which sucks because the metal shop is closed so i can't buy any stock uh, i spy wobbly bent I feel like it's bent right there I think that's it. How the hell is that possible that all it needed was one carefully calculated whack? That's what he said. That looks pretty straight now though. Time to weld it in place, huh? Yes, ma'am. Uh, should we spray something on the backside of that bare steel before it goes in there? Yeah. These little rubber butt plugs are the only thing keeping me from making this thing from scratch. That would be, I'm not that good of a fabricator to incorporate that. I heard a door. Oh, oh shit, I was trying to help you. Yeah. You found steel even though it's a weekend. Charlie is an actual fabric cobbler, so I phoned a friend for assistance on this. So you think just like flat plating the bottom is gonna be enough or do you think I mean, it needs- I mean, you're gonna box, unless, I mean, you can- Use the U-stock? The U-channel, yeah. All the way across it like this. You know what I mean? You're gonna have to notch it in places to get it to sit down in it. I think if you bottom it out hard enough to wad up plated with eighth inch, nothing short of like really super heavy duty is gonna matter. I mean, the key is not to do that, so. So if you put this super heavy stuff on the bottom and then you miter it and run it up to here and make a little tab, then you're gonna transfer all that weight or all that force to right here and it's probably just gonna wad up the frame rails on the car because they're only made out of sheet metal anyway. On the real rally car, the whole entire front end is probably made out of tube work and it's probably all tied into the cage and everything. Yeah. The more I go down the rabbit hole on this, the more I realize a WRC car is so far from a production street car. It's not even funny, at least modern ones. So, steel, arts and crafts time. Nibbler is not a precision instrument. It doesn't really show up on camera. My other pair of safety glasses broke just as I was putting them on my face. This arm snapped off, the plastic broke. So I stabbed myself right here on the edge of my eye with safety glasses. That's ready to weld, other than the sides. It's the next day and it's absolutely beautiful outside. I don't want the alignment of my side pieces to be thrown off. So, whistle biscuit.
I know someone's gonna make a comment about not having welding clothing on and I actually own some. I just forgot, okay? Shit happens. I got this thing all tacked together and already it is so much more rigid and strong feeling than it was before. Well, Angel, yes. Angel pineapple food. I'm gonna, you have better welding clothes on. Yeah. This is like the dumbest thing you can possibly wear for welding because it's see-through. Yeah, this is at least a little thick. You can still see I got some through, but. Oh, man, now I got a giant red line on my forehead. Not only did I forget my welding clothing, I forgot my lunch today. Good thing I got some strawberry meat. Cardboard template. There's probably a smarter way of what I'm doing, and I'm probably capable of figuring that out. But my brain is currently occupied with stupid. I picked the most janky scrap of cardboard to do this with. Like of all pieces, it's like deteriorating, falling apart. I think that was one of my scraps. Wait, did you need this? No, no, no. I'm saying it was one of the pieces that I cut off, so it is a jagged, ragged piece. That sounds like a 90s pop group. Jagged, ragged piece. <laughs> kind of like boys to men, but their songs are worse. Look, it's a poor quality mitten. It's a sh it's a shitten. Yeah, that works. Good. Steal. I'm going to steal your steal. Oh man, so close. I'm trying not to be wasteful and using a piece of scrap. That looks like a fist now. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna shut up. Wasteful, I am not. Look, it's like someone drew the state of Texas on meth. This one looks like an uptight turtle with a box on its back. Pretty close. You have no idea how much of an ass pain it was to try to bend that around the end of this. The key is gonna be doing this without welding my little cheap clamp to the part. Did you change the setting on here? Oh yeah, it's a little hotter. No, no, it's nice. It's perfect. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay. Put a couple little boogers right here and here just to hold it in place. Hopefully this clamp doesn't let it pop when I take it off. Nope, good. Don't judge my welds. I hardly ever get a chance to weld anything because I don't own my own welder. I feel like if I spent more time doing this, I would actually get good at it though because I know what I'm doing wrong when it happens. So that guy's gonna go right there. It's already after five in the afternoon and if I don't stop working now and start editing, you're not gonna have the video that you have already watched. So I have to edit. I wasn't quite sure what to do with my strawberry tops. So I made a little shrine for the ants and I gave them a gift and they seem quite happy. I. I like ants. Ants are interesting creatures. So I can get my last video for you guys edited on time. Angel finished up the welds on this for me. So I have a head start going into today. Gear plugs from yesterday, cause that's not gross. Ugh, it's bouncing off the wall, it's hitting me. I'll just do it like this. I smoothed up the bottom of this thing just because I got to mount a skid plate flush to it. So I want a nice smooth edge. Uh, I don't know why I'm marking this with a marker. If you follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm about to do. This actually works super, super good. Not this stepper bit. This thing is dull as shit. Wasn't Nibbler the name of Leela's pet in Futurama? I think it was. Hey, 
Red Nibbler works so good for this. Both of these are perfectly weldable donut holes. There's no rubber bushing that goes in this one, so I don't know if I should do it or not. It might add strength, but would you do it or? I know it'll add strength because oh, everything is just like wasteful at this point. <laughs> what? The smile means you know it's wasteful. I mean, it could go both ways. I mean, you're already here and you already did it twice. Just in case you were wondering, there is absolutely no wind today or even yesterday out here. So it's perfect for welding outdoor. kind of hard because I had about an eighth inch gap between the two pieces of steel that I had to fill. This side the gap was a little smaller maybe two or three millimeter and I feel my weld looks a lot better on this side. Yeah it fits. I just gotta grind it smooth so it doesn't look bad but that's where the radiator will sit just inside there. It's strong, right? Yeah, this thing is hella beefy now. Yeah. You can literally jump on that. Yeah, this thing is hella beefy now. This isn't the final paint job on this. It's just, it's all bare metal, so I don't want it rusting. So I'm just gonna lightly dust it for now. These can't be life-size height because there's no way I'm taller than either one of them. You know a video is a ton of labor when I'm now on the fourth day. That also means I'm falling behind. See, this thing is totally different on the WRC car because the WRC car has a V-mounted radiator in the front. Yeah, I'm missing one of the bolts, but... Ow. Okay. Keep going. There. Oh, yeah. That is so much more rugged. Than it was before. This is so incredibly strong you probably jack the car up by it. And this is what the skid plate is going to mount to here on the front. In addition to a structure that needs to be built from the frame rail to the frame rail. Essentially a new crash bar. Shout out to this BGM Sport website. I found all kinds of really good photos that show just how the actual WRC car was fabricated. See right here, this is the exact same bumper made by the same people that I have for my car and how it mounts is in these little holes. And that structure is all it has for the radiator included because that gets V-mounted behind it. When I had first started this project, I had never anticipated it reaching this level. So it's kind of ass backwards the way I'm doing it now because this is the kind of stuff you do at the design level early on. And just between Angel and myself, we don't really have the capacity to build a full WRC car. These are built by teams of people with probably up to a million dollars to build a full WRC car. So I'm doing the best I can. The next step will be trying to figure out how to mount this Kevlar Rally Tech front bumper. You can see these little nipples. These need to sit inside this big structure we need to build for the front of the car that aligns it. Just like this, how you can see in the picture. Then there's this lower portion down here that that probably goes to the skid plate as well. So I'm gonna have to try to combine the two perhaps. As far as Angel's rear wheel arches go, he did a really good job filling this area in all the way back down to here. And there's this tiny little gap left right there, but this is all gonna get kind of skimmed over of seam sealer and then rubber undercoated. You can see the other side, he just finished doing this side over here. Now the other issue we're gonna run into is behind this is my old fuel filler, which no longer goes to anything because the door conflicted with the wide body. That's a whole nother engineering challenge ahead. In the next video, Angel and I are going to try to figure out this front crash bar structure and engineer that and fabricate it. If you guys have any fabricatory input that you'd like to give, I just made that word up. It might be a real word, but I'm dumb and just messed it up. Uh, feel free to comment below. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!